Well, now that we're off that Dajaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. What is the machine saying? We seem to have found it. As Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi. Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace, and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you wrought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? It is good you recognize this. It means you will understand why you must leave us. You are exiled, and you are a Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. Much defiance in that one. You were correct, Kavar. When she was here, I felt it. It was as if she was not there, more like an echo. The war has touched the youngest of the Order. Many of them have lost themselves in battle against the Mandalorians. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. She has lost herself. She is no Jedi. She walked Revan's path, but she was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code, and lead all who listen to the Dark Side, as they did the Exile. You are wrong. The Dark Side is not what I sensed in the Exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. She has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the dark side. We should not have let her depart. She will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with her, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let her go because we must. Where she travels, she carries her destination with her. Malachor V should have been her grave. You saw it in her walk, and in the Force. It was as if she was already dead. No, not dead. Many battles remain for that one, if what we have seen is true. But the future is a shifting thing, and she cuts like a blade through it. We should have told her the truth. A Jedi deserves to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believe was true. There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. Perhaps in many years we will call her before us and explain what happened to her, and how she may be healed. Until then, she must accept her journey. But she may never discover the truth, and she will never know why we cast her out. And that is the future we must accept. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they?
A strange coincidence. It is no coincidence. There is some larger plan at work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but you know that. I don't know, General, but whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. I spent a lot of time around Jedi during the war. None of them would let me take their lightsaber apart, but I did learn about their construction. We need a power cell, emitter matrix, lens and focusing crystal, Though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means. Never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common. Though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you, and if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. Got a minute? I'm a little busy here. What is it? Won't take more than a minute. All right, I'll work. Or you talk. Look, your friend, the Jedi? You know her from way back, don't you? How much do you know about her, really? Her? You mean the general? Yeah, during the war. If that's what you mean by way back. Can't say I know too much about her, though. Better than anyone else on this ship. Just give me your opinion, okay? And don't laugh. I'm trying to work here, Atten. I was just wondering if you thought maybe she and I might... You're being serious. You said you wouldn't laugh. You are being serious. Atten, she was a general. I was just a tech. Your guess is about as good as... Well, what's your guess, then? I'm getting back to work. Hey! I'm being serious here. You're laughing at me? I'll put you on the scrap heap, you walking tin can. All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you, too. What was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. I am not pushing you around. 
I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. Hey, General, are you all right? You look like you've been standing too close to one of my shield generators. Was there something you wanted me for? That old thing? I built him when I was a kid. Been following me around for years now, despite what I've done to try and chase him off. Hey, just kidding. I'm happy to have you around. He helps me out with repairs. I outfitted him with a cutting laser and some other tools for delicate modifications. He's also good for singeing the pants of annoying techs. I've been thinking about doing some other work on him, but I barely have time. Too busy fixing up the ship. Something else I can help you with? If the Republic would just rein Zerka in, there'd be no problem. But as long as Zerka is allowed to undermine the Athorian's efforts, Telos will remain dead. I can't take seeing my work being used by those bloodsuckers. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let's talk about something else. Something else I can help you with? I got tired of it. Kept dropping my hydro spanner. Figured I'd get a new one. I was only kidding. Actually, it was a souvenir for Malakor. I was lucky it was all I lost. But at least it gave me something to do, right? Everyone always said I was probably half machine anyway. Something else I can help you with? Just working on the ship. I'm not sure who got her up and running, but I'm amazed she's even space worthy. Whoever made these repairs doesn't think like most mechanics. But don't worry, I'll get everything in shape. General, need something? Sorry, yes, I can't get my head out of the past. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from... I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. Know what I mean? I'm sure you do. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it, and deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. All I wanted to do was send a message, but I couldn't even do that right. That's the past, though. It's good to be working with you again, General. Something else I can help you with? Sure do, General. I've made a few while I wasn't working on the ship. Here you go. Just remember, the best shield is not getting shot at all. Something else I can help you with? Sure do, General. I've just to remember. Something else I can help I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? Why did you decide to fight? I felt the same way. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy 
they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? I couldn't do that. It was almost as though the battle took control of me, drove me forward. It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me, turned me into a weapon. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you wanted me for? Yes, General? Yes, have you come with questions? Very well. Very well. Ask. There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago. They were distractions only. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight, but sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is, before the veil is lifted. Ask, and I will answer. I know her as much as I know any Jedi. If you have other questions, you may ask those, but on Atris, I can provide you no answers that you cannot find on your own. Ask, and I... You know, I noticed a glow before, but now, now it's bright around you. You've come a long way since Paragus, and despite all we've been through, you seem a lot better for it. It shows. It's kind of inspiring, to be honest. Anyway, just wanted to mention it. I think the others have noticed it too. Alright, what did you want to know? Something up? All right.
Well, here we are. The Smuggler's Moon. It's the gaping maw of Nal Hutta. Swallowing all the cargo and spaceport thugs the galaxy has to offer. Mandalorians, mercenaries, war veterans, and pilots from the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War ended up on Nar Shaddaa, from all sides of the conflict. When the last war ended, there was no place left for them to go. Nar Shaddaa's a rough place and easy to get lost in. Or for someone to get lost. If we wanted to keep out of sight from the Sith for a while, you couldn't pick a better spot. It means glorious jewel in Hatis, but don't let that fool you. It's the central breeding grounds of the Huts. Nar Shaddaa orbits it. Nal Hutt is as slimy as the Huts. Lots of swamp and bloated gas. It's where those slugs reach out and grab chunks of the galaxy. Trust me, we're not gonna go anywhere near the place unless we want to be washing the stink out of our clothes for the next few years. Yeah, some came looking for work running freight and cargo. Still, there's only so many ships to go around and so many workers. So others lend their weapons to the Huts in the exchange. It's become a prime base for raider recruitment across the galaxy. It won't be easy. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa. Finding anyone on the moon's surface is gonna be hard. We're gonna touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in. Or find you once you arrive. Anyone flying the Star Lanes is docked on Nar Shaddaa at least once. I wouldn't want to live there, and I doubt anyone does by choice. Not everyone who came to Nar Shaddaa were soldiers. A lot of worlds were destroyed by the Mandalorians. And the Jedi. Left a lot of people wandering the galaxy. Shouldn't be too hard. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa, finding anyone on the moon's surface is gonna be hard. We're gonna touch down in the refugee sector. I've plotted a course for the refugee sector and we should touch down within the hour. Once we're down, we should finally be able to breathe easy. There's no way anyone's gonna find us here. comes to Nar Shaddaa. While she walks upon the smuggler's moon, she is not to be harmed. Observe her, track her, but do not eclipse her movements, or I shall eclipse yours. <coughs> ジャワジャシムポインドラカワイチエンドモモパラマカワナアバワシユクロレンマンマポシチンドララ本当のサカジタペドワナマティチャキチュノカダミレニトレンフィロソニヘコチュパナレットアタマクチャ Request, if Goto's vessel is no longer neutral ground, inform us so that we might initiate assassination protocols and commence firing at once. 
تولدم به مسورا کو پاپای بوتنیا تا چه مروز کم سا جواز کو با سب جاب رجی سا کر و نکسا موچی تو سا سا گرنده یو کی چو نکا دا میره نی تو رن فیلو سا نی هکو چو پا نرد اتا مک چا تا هپا بوتنیا گو جو چو پی چا گوین تا با نی سو چو نور تو گا پر تو لالا شی شی جو با تو سا جی با چا و تاک من سا تو کشا نا چی تو لو Observation. Jedi follow the self-destructive path of pacifism and tolerance. They will not attack first. Dovere nincha, yonona shi tasa chuch. Dovere nincha, yonona shi tasa chuch. Goli rosodish. Ranta kras mobas. Ah, the beautiful stench and decay of desperate living. This moon, it teems with life. It is difficult to center oneself. Word of warning, watch where you step, or you'll fall for hours. Maybe a little, but landing here means we didn't have to transmit our ID signature. You know what trouble that always brings. In fact, while we're here, we should get those signatures changed. Wouldn't make us such a target when we enter a new system. Sure. Most of the landing pads around here are unclaimed. Or should be. They're pretty badly maintained, so they're not safe to land on. Well, I mean, not this one. But they all have the reputation, so we should be all right. I think. Forgot to tell them we were landing. The refugee sector's a dead zone. No one cares too much who flies in and out of here as long as they're not carrying cargo that the Exchange or the Huts might want a piece of. Yeah. In all its glory. Don't get your hopes up from what you see here, though. As soon as we hit the main sector, that's when the smell and the mobs can get pretty bad. All right, then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. There should be a central trading hub up ahead. Their stock's probably not the best, but they may have some things worthwhile. Well, that means finding either a bounty hunter, a ranking member of the Exchange, or someone willing to talk. None of which are too appealing. Bounty hunters in the Exchange are going to want to shoot you. And someone who is willing to talk is willing to talk to anyone. Which means trouble. The bounty is a waste of our efforts. All that matters is the Jedi. The intentions of the thugs of this moon are of no consequence. It's up to you. There's bound to be someone in the sector willing to spill their guts for a credit or two. Finding a Jedi, or anyone else touched by the Force here, will be difficult. The mass of people, the rush of their emotions. It makes detection difficult. But this moon does not get any smaller while we wait. This sector is as good as any place to begin our search, so let us begin. Well, if we're gonna search a moon of a few billion inhabitants for one Jedi that even our own can't sense, might as well start as soon as possible. And just being here should be enough. People in the refugee sector don't tend to ask too many questions. We should be safe enough. All right, if you have any questions, just ask. We should be able to leave the ship here as long as we want. No one supervises these landing pads anymore. You! You there! Uh-oh. What's with you? Let that piece of junk sink its thrust into my landing pad! Huh? My trash heap? Hmm. Fine, land there! My trash heap's all that's keeping your ship from making the final plunge! And trust me, 
It won't be long in coming, I promise you. I got some visitors booked for your space, but I'm sure the two of you can work it out when they arrive. Keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. Y you've got us locked in. Thanks for your help. They would have crippled me for sure. Well, they work for the Exchange, for a Quarren named Visquis. He's looking to step up in the Exchange. The only language the Exchange respects is money, so Visquis is trying to increase his profits by using the refugees here in Nar Shadda as a cheap labor force. We're only good to him as slaves and merchandise. He wants to keep us in one place, so he can control us. That's always been the way. Well, except lately. The exchange has been clamping down on the refugee sector hard, and I've no idea why. They've started kidnapping people, hurting others, but there seems to be no reason to it. <laughs> you don't. He comes to you, if he's got reason to. Either because you can help him out, or because you're making trouble. Either way, it's not a good thing. Whatever your reasons, thanks. Spare a few credits, friend. Much appreciated, friend. Life's hard in the refugee sector, and this should go a long way to helping. Uh, all right. I don't know much beyond the refugee sector here, but I can share what I know. This sector's filled with refugees from the Jedi Civil War, and even as far back as the Mandalorian Wars. Refugees and war veterans both, and anyone else who was rendered homeless by the war. The Jedi destroyed planets across the galaxy, and here's where the wreckage ended up. That's two names for one thing. It's difficult to tell in the crossfire, and the Sith were led by Jedi. In the end, it didn't make much difference. A lot of space lanes cross at Nar Shadda, and once here, it's hard to move on. Even fighter pilots from the war can't get work at the docks. The freighter crews are full up. There's no work here, and no way out. Unless you want to become a hired muscle for the exchange, or work in a hut slave camp. Jedi Master? There aren't any Jedi Masters in the galaxy, let alone on Nar Shadda. This place is a cesspit with the exchange in the hut stabbing their claws into everything. But, you know, I did hear something about a bounty on Jedi, though. Something the exchange posted. Doesn't matter, though. Aren't any more Jedi around, so no one's gonna be collecting that bounty. You're lying. You're mad. A Jedi wouldn't come to the... You're serious. You're telling the truth. What are you doing here? Are you trying to get us out of this place? Please, you have no idea what life is like here. Of course, of course. Tell me, what else did he want to know, Jedi? Not much to say. 
except as a high price. You need to find a bounty hunter to get more, and they've been pretty scarce lately. You might have more luck trying to find someone connected to the exchange. And I don't mean some spaceport muscle, I mean someone connected. No idea. Could be one of them cross the exchange, and they're looking for revenge on all of them. Well, they tend to lay low. To be honest, it's like with bounty hunters. You may need to do something to get their attention. No idea. Look, Jedi, before you go, I know you probably didn't come here to save us, but... But I knew Jedi during the war, and I know that they always helped when they could. If I can help you, even just by keeping an ear out, I can let you know if they hear anything. I'll do that then. I'll come seek you out if I hear anything I think you might want to know. I saw what you did to those exchange thugs, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? Thank you, stranger. I won't forget your kindness. Why did you do such a thing? Such kindnesses will mean nothing. His path is set. Giving him what he has not earned is like pouring sand into his hands. And would that be a kindness? What if by surviving another day he brings a greater darkness upon another? The Force binds all things. The slightest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. Even an act of kindness may have more severe repercussions than you know or can see. By giving him something he has not earned, perhaps all you have helped him become is a target. Seeing another elevated often brings the eyes of others who suffer. And perhaps in the end, all you have wrought is more pain. And that is my lesson to you. Be careful of charity and kindness, lest you do more harm with open hands than with a clenched fist. Very well, but mind what I have said. Use your power, but in its proper place. And what did she want? Nothing. Just answers to some questions. It's okay. I already know she's a Jedi. You do? Then why? Mm, trust me, Narshada just got complicated.
My lightsaber. You've destroyed it. I yield, Master. It is as I heard through the Force. My life for yours. You must. The alternative is only another death. And I would rather die by your hands. I have nothing to offer you. Your strength is superior. It is as I felt. Now I've seen everything. This woman, she's a Miraluka. I didn't think any were left in this part of the galaxy. Yeah, they're a pretty secretive race. I heard that some of their kind become Jedi, but a Sith? That's... well, that's a new one. I'm not sure how you'd go about killing one. It'd be tricky. Just mentioning it, she looks like she's suffered enough wounds already, even after the beating you gave her. I heard they had a colony on the Midrim, almost halfway between Onderon and Dantooine. Then, it wasn't there anymore. The whole planet was wiped out. Nothing left alive. No one knows why. Well, it was a planet of her people. If they see through the Force, who knows? If they're all Force-sensitive, maybe they all saw something through the Force that we can't see, and they left before it happened. Or maybe it killed them. They claim to see on a higher plane than we do. You know, the whole Force thing makes me nervous. Well, some of her wounds are pretty bad. Looks like she was already carrying her share of scars, though. I think she'll recover, yeah. Yes, General? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing a lens. Something else I can help. My life for yours. I am able to serve. If we enter battle, I will fight and die alongside you. some time. My flesh is healed if that's the answer you seek. I know, and I fear that others will see the mercy in your actions, and in my survival, and use it as a weapon to do you greater harm. you, heard you through the Force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the Force, but was unaware of its nature. Of you. 
The disturbance is not something one feels from a living thing. There is little my master does not know. And that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space. And even I do not know where he travels. Until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master, I cannot permit you to find him until you are ready. If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. I cannot. I will not. I would die first, and gladly, to preserve you, untouched, unharmed. Now that I have found you, I cannot sacrifice what I have found. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. I have seen it. And when you stand before him and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. But if you seek to survive, then you must understand why this is so. There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. It is not a subject which I have spoken of since its destruction. It was not a thing done with machines or weapons. The Force is far more terrible, and it touches more lives than any machine can hope to slay. For everyone that feels the Force, strongly, deeply. Each one feels and perceives it in their own way. You have strengths, whether you know it or not. And my master has his. His power is great, and it comes from hunger. He is a wound in the Force, more presence than flesh. And in his wake, life dies, sacrificing itself to his hunger. And those who feel the Force strongly are beacons to his hunger. My people, my planet, would have been attacked in time. It was inevitable. Yet we could do nothing about it. The Jedi, the last council of the Jedi, came to our world to meet in secret. They hoped that perhaps among our people, they could achieve the clarity to see what was striking them from the darkness of the galaxy. They succeeded, but only in bringing him from the outer regions. And Qatar, with my kind, with the Jedi upon its surface, could no longer be ignored. And my people died, and the Jedi died, and there was no one left, only me. They hoped to see the threat that had been stalking them, and they did. But they were unprepared for the magnitude of the threat. He cannot deny his hunger for long. And any gathering of Jedi is something he cannot long resist. And now that the Jedi are vanishing, I do not know what will happen. Perhaps he will grow strong enough to eradicate all life, merely with his presence. 
They hoped to see the threat that had been stalking them, and they did. But they were unprepared for the magnitude of the threat. I will answer what I can, but my answers may prove useless to you. It is not a subject which I have spoken. I will answer what I can. I am not familiar with the place you speak of. My master has not entered Republic space for some time, but there are others who may move more freely, who may have been responsible for such an act of destruction. There are many factions within the Sith, all seeking to take what little remains in the wake of the Jedi Civil War. Where one moves, it is not always known to the others. But their purpose is the same, the death of all Jedi everywhere. They believe you are the last of the Jedi, and their hatred of the Jedi unites them. All their eyes are upon you, and it is a terrible, quiet darkness that pursues you. I will answer what I can. My master did not cause the end of the planet you speak of. There are many factions where one moves it. They believe you are the... I will answer what I can. My people once had the power to perceive events, to see through the Force. That sight may manifest itself in many ways, and at times, I may affect the abilities of others to see as well. My sight has been damaged. What I have taught you, it is not the full extent of the perceptions of my people. My master, when he showed me my world, showed it to me as it is. It hurt. And since that moment, it has been difficult to perceive the Force as I once did. But after traveling with you, I feel that perhaps there was a gift in it, hidden beneath the pain. Only when one suffers do certain truths become evident, both of the galaxy and of the self. And I feel you are an example of this. If you wish to know, perhaps it is possible to show another what my people see, what I see. First, you must close your eyes. The surface of the ship, its sights, will only be a distraction. Now in your mind, reach out. Listen for my breathing. Do not focus on the sound, but the life behind it. Imagine its energy, its texture, in tandem with the breathing. And then in your mind, step back from the image and see what remains. There. It is not as difficult as I thought. You learn quickly. It will take effort to maintain such sight, but you now have that power. And with it, you can use it to see life around you in a different way as I used to see it. I will answer what I... Forgive me, but before you go, I must ask. Why do you do this? Why do you seek to help me? Teach me? You must not do this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. So you say. But it is not something I have observed, or seen. I remember little of my homeworld before I entered my master's service. It is not as it was. There is little left of such memories. Or the planet itself. Very well. Perhaps we shall speak more of this at another time. But know this. I cannot allow you to weaken yourself for me. My life for yours. I will answer what I can.
My life is you. Yours. Let's go. How may I yeah. serve? My life is you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Gjerë rektala që mëndë se bëngë rrugë këtë të ndë gjuqë më tasë o bëngë kishë më në cici? Të la dibë në të mëni kërë në kada? Të re wana gjumë në konata delë rrugë në të në Da e rinë të rrugë ka ure kërë pa pëna në rrënë qinka Të ra që e uemë në të të rrë rrë e seni sentën Që rrë nana gundë oso rrë minë a kjellë rrë të gurë këtë pada Kjo rrë të rrë pada në rrënë të rrë kamerada të rrë fribu nëmë bëdë bëkë rrë që një rrë Va te vaka reware, so më kohën qëre në rëgrom. Mune i dhe rëri pa konë në dosa? Varin keshkë, punë se të lanësome të tasa. Te re wana gjumë në konata delë e rëgunë në tunë na. Da e rinë të rrënë ka ure kërë pa pëna në rënë qinka. Te ra që e uemë në të të rrë rrë e seni sentën. A, besotre në nga, të në indukë të brakon të unë të të sërata. Du në qi qi me në ndade seke. Te lanë në nada. If we needed to, Tien may be able to modify our ship's transponder codes. Tere wana jung konata delve raguno antuna. Dai rinto rung kawere kare papana la ranchinga. Tere che we minuto to orere seni senten. Tere wana jung konata delve raguno antuna. Dai rinto rung kawere kare papana la ranchinga. Tere che we minuto to orere seni senten. Tere wana jung konata delve raguno antuna. Dai rinto rung kawere kare papana la ranchinga. Tere che we minuto to orere seni senten. Dere rinë të rrënë të wakë vërë e kërë e wapë gjerë e bu. Nënë së të lë pakë që në kërësë dërë nënë e grajë e grajë dhe lënë të që lërë e në. Ndë së në e grajë dhe lëntë rrë kërë e wapë të rrëtë në qingë rrëtë në. Ndë së në të rrënë 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 të rrë Gjerë rrë këtala që mëndë se bëngë Dhe rrë intë rrënë të wakë Tere wana gjumë në konatë Dorë në rrëndisë If we need it Tere wana gjumë Yes. 
Hey, I saw that ship you flew in on. My ship. It's the Ebon Hawk, isn't it? She was stolen from me during a routine run in the Mid Rim, near the close of the Mandalorian Wars. The registry's 34 P7JK. It's got a temperamental hyperdrive, and the turrets can be sluggish and unresponsive against fast moving fighters. She's also got two secret compartments, one in the cargo hold, right near the plasteel cylinders in the back, and the second beneath the bunks in the starboard cabin. So, you're gonna hand it over now, or are you going to be difficult? No deal. A ship's worth its weight in spice on Narshada, and nothing's worth being trapped here another year scrounging freight jobs. Good to hear you aren't going to challenge it. That makes things a lot easier. No hard feelings, I hope. Don't worry. You shouldn't have any trouble finding transport off Narshada on your own. I'll be going now. Get used to the solid ground beneath you. Thoughts are disturbed. I can feel them from a great distance, like a shiver running through you. It is not the true Narshada that you feel around you. It is this moon, with the metal and machines stripped away and the currents of the Force laid bare. I'm surprised you can feel it. I fear the damage to you had deadened you to such perceptions. What you feel is the echo of the minds of these creatures within the Force. Their anger, their greed, their desperation. It is life. One might as well heal the universe, but such manipulation is possible, yes. It requires that one be able to feel the critical point within the fractured mass, and know how to strike it in such a way that the echoes travel to your intended destination. Healing is manipulation, and if you do not realize it yet, then you will discover that an act of healing depends largely on Manipulation is done through propelling events, or selected ones, into motion. It is done through teaching, through example, and through conviction. 
And the greatest of victories are not manipulations at all, but simply awakening others to the truth of what you believe, of hearing it echoed around you in life. But let us be silent. Words and thoughts are distractions. Taracho mo sincho kawawol pa muleji kumana minta barawamba miche dos kawana bota yuta tanga kina matura tayaita ta bosa na nansa ta unta chiwita inka kikra ya na chawanga kone dobre kun mili wosa slima po wanga samoana muta. Kawana bota yuta tanga kina matura tayaita ta bosan sata da hupa bosa kurata go juju to yoke hiata yamba wajiake yuki to tune ta kometa ka playa justing miki go go beaste kun grabi la king no mulara kichi kuta grasa kisha. Que chubo grayo bog no cada etapa tiza don me taliawa bo bagaragawanda ya itua ulwanji uma no tinor crelun conferento crin bano croc nixerindo duncha morbansum dobre saslima po wanga samoana mucha chone murlera Don King e bano jansaka ni karaska. Tancha nik de mawimbo kranta mi pilan. Dovre kun mili wosa slima po wanga samoana gmucha. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. Ta yaita ta bosa nanansata. Gavadumpa munsuru kupla liyawa Bo bagaragawanda yaitua ulwanji um Dovre kun mili wosa slima po wanga samoana gmucha Grey King no una panca di planito ba manananga. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura ta yaita ta bosa na nansa ta
Kawana bota yuta tanga kinyamatura. Tayaita ta bosanan ansata. Wata grito kichimulira. Nicho tanga nao. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinyamatura. Tayaita ta bosanan ansata. Ento mesh mi paju, watamincha yokolo untuado nukula bira wa tines un soto. Shon conti chaum, king lord ta aitha kun, aitha pati satong, tia kun bato taun, chona choba. Chong yo ma bola yo ma chopiti man ponjame 
Sashange bedwana mlela chupa wanga kuna kuticha chuna kuna sa. Chopiti man ponjame. Sashange bedwana mlela. Chupa wanga kuna kuticha chuna kuna sa. Please, look, I, I already paid the exchange what I have. Uh, but I, uh, oh, look, here's the one with your credits. About time. Look, these gentlemen are getting impatient. When they hear about this, they'll come back a dozen strong and tear you limb from limb. Uh, all right. What'd you want to know? Jedi Master? You crazy? There aren't any more Jedi running around, let alone Masters. But you're serious, aren't you? All right, well, look. If I were... As for where that happens on Nar Shadda, I have no idea. The bounty hunters don't have any one place where they stick around. Best thing I can tell you is if you want to find one, get a bounty on your head and then wait. Are you serious? All right. I must be doing something right for you to come along and bail me out like you did. Such acts have their own strength about them. I had forgotten. It may seem that way, but perhaps it can become much more. I'm sorry, I did not mean to speak of it. Principles of sacrifice and charity. In time, I'm afraid that it will weaken you for what comes. But I have said enough, and you do not need my counsel. Your actions should, as always, be your own. So, you have the look of a seasoned spacer about you. What batwash are you looking for? That's so. Well, you're in luck. 
I got plenty of it. Costs you a hundred credits for a flask big enough for what you need, no more. All right. Guess you weren't as desperate as I thought. Fifty credits, no more. Here's the flask. Aged to perfection. Should be just what you need. I'll check it again. It can't be anything else. Just check the damn connector. I don't trust the diagnostics any more than I trust you. Because I don't like droids. They break. In the head. Well, whatever you call that thing on your head. Yeah, well, if I'm mean to you, it's because I care.
کودون به ماسورا کو پاپایی بوتنیا تا چه مرات کم سا جواز کو با سب جاب ریجی سک Yes, General? Let me see what you have. That's everything. Now all you need... Jawa
Donos Emeragith, what a rat. Donos emeragith, wana ra gorachi drum ka sa inchobin sasha, dosimana rachata. Donos emeragith, wana ra gorachi drum ka sa inchobin sasha, dosimana rachata. Moka kama ran endoso ran we no chabi, du ran tamana sobu. Do mama be want to susi to mukarata to extract donatada be mama jokto to renebo into rata sisi me borokra Arana mo sibu and asarans crema sukun ratungala chawi mo jubu in kosoracha Susi tu mukarata, 
to respect to Baba Jokto, to Renibu into Rata CC Maburukra, which have been Doko, to Naranga Marachunga. Shasa or Chutu Gunkura, a winty malare. Naka prota gocha, Jarko mati soch balorcha, Yota chi sabarinish. Uma volpa holosha, Chuba do sojivicha, Crota short nachi no mak. Uma volpa holosha, Chuba do sojivicha, Crota short nachi no mak. Uma volpa holosha. Chuba do sojivicha, krota short na chino mak. Javanakish, to chimaka, loto logo besanus, misash no chut. Koparo dunga nini sino shoka, mushka me to rundi, chuba me ne sin, ratak man prata. Naka prota gocha, jarko mati soch balorcha, yota chi sabarinish. Javanakish, to chimaka, loto no go besanus, misash no chut. Uma volpa holosha, chuba do sojivicha, krota short na chino mak. Naka prota gocha, jarko mati soch balorcha, yota chi sabarinish. Naka prota gocha, jarko mati soch balorcha. Yota chi sabarinish. Niko gimma si ko we oko tom ne shasa o chutu kawana su gunkura? Watch your single point the Rakawa, each even do Mopa Rama Kawana Abawasi. You crawl and one Mapu city in Nolara. Tonoranda Manakan, the Boinchula. Bo Mababe want to susi to Mukarata. To extract Tonatada bear Maba Jokto. To renew into Rata CC Maburukra. Grachi, o bati com paduana musca na bosca wamba. Tu é de uma cultura, mas o clima conjura bem mais a nível de das pés de cimento chora quando. Nora água musca e o colo a labaca. Hora de nevas pela nariz da estrela. Chan, o tos é uma guerra, que não era que era de cimento chora lá.
How may I serve?
and honor is mine. How may I serve? What is it?
What is it? You have befriended the seer. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. The Sith carry the battle to you, and you spare them. And as we travel, the empty places of this ship are filled. I hope your thoughts in this matter are clear. If you take her on as a servant, know that the Sith meet their end at the hands of their apprentices. It is not something I would wish to happen to you. This one you have saved has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty. Then you are learning. Did he? And what do you make of that? The Mandalorians were right to respect you on the field of battle. The Jedi are gone, vanished. Now, an entire planet of Force sensitives wiped clean of life. And now this slice of the galaxy is blind. It is no coincidence. The two events are tied. I fear you are right. And I fear it may prove more than that. War is a hunger. And there are spirits in the galaxy whose hunger is never satisfied. But there is little to be done about it now. Watch the seer carefully. She may reveal more. Ask and... He, if he can truly be called a man any longer, is one of the dark lords that pursues you. I do not think he knows what you are. Not yet. He spared the Miraluka, and that may have been the last shred of feeling that exists within him. Keep his slave close to you. I suspect there was a reason he spared her, and perhaps a reason that she survived when the rest of her people and the Jedi did not. One cannot have power of that magnitude that her master possesses and still think and perceive the universe as we do, as most of us do. I had hoped that you would not have to confront him, but her presence here has changed all that. You will have to meet him in battle. You must be prepared to sacrifice the blinded one. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. It is a technique that is almost as old as the Sith themselves. It is a means of severing connections between life, the Force, and feeding upon the death it causes. It cannot be taught. It can only be gained through instinct, through experiencing its effects firsthand. Yes, and he fed upon its destruction. It will sustain him for a time. Power? Do you think so? You would be wrong. There is no strength in the hunger he possesses, and the will behind his power is a primal thing, and it devours him as he devours others. His mere presence kills all around him, slowly feeding him. He is already dead. It is simply a question of how many he kills before he falls. Nothing is impossible with the Force. It is an energy that flows through all living things. And like energy, it may be harnessed, channeled, and consumed at times. It may even be a substance that can burn and ignite. Do not think of his power as one would a weapon, or one of your warships of the Republic. It is terrible, but it is still a subtle thing. The sect of assassins that chase you feed on the Force. What he does is simply the pinnacle of what they could achieve in time. And that is why they and their techniques must be wiped out. No one again must experience and learn what her master did. As much as one may use the Force to bolster the wills and strengths of others, the reverse is possible, though not often used. Instead of sending one's will through connections in the Force, instead such connections are drawn upon, fed upon, and drained completely. Then you understand how terrible such a power is, and why it must be ended. It is an empty road to the dark side, and by traveling it, the price is death before one's time. He is a breach in the Force, capable of consuming the lives of those around him. 
Sometimes the touch is slow, as it is with his crew. It is not something he can direct or focus, much like hunger itself. He is more of a hole in the Force than a living thing. Force-sensitives and worlds rich in the Force draw him. The Miraluka world was one such place. That is why where the Jedi gather, Jedi will die. He will feel it, unless they mask their presence. But Qatar called out as a beacon to him, and he could not resist it. And he cares nothing for the Sith, or its teachings, or the Jedi. And when the Jedi are dead, he will feed on the galaxy, the Republic, and eventually consume the Sith as well. There is no future in the empty galaxy he sees, and that is why he must be stopped. The breach must be sealed before his power grows beyond what even we can hope to stop. Perhaps he is bound to her, as I am bound to you. If so, there may be a death served by hers. You must be prepared to sacrifice the Blinded One. Perhaps her death will buy you the time you need to deal with her master. Entertain what illusions you will. I am too tired to argue them with you. Ask. I know her. Ask, and I... And... Ah, without a home, another exile. Her people are not prone to violence, war, or hatred, yet their planet is obliterated, scoured from the face of the galaxy, and all that remains is a Sith. You are right to trust your instincts. Something is wrong. It is only a matter of discovering what and why. If your instincts lead you to an answer, seek me out. Perhaps we will discuss more. Ask. My life for yours.
I don't know who you are, but you picked the wrong room to break into. No harm done. For a minute, I thought you might have been someone else. My wife, Ada. There's a chance she may be here on Nar Shadda. A lot of refugees ended up here after the Jedi Civil War. I came here to see if I could track her down. Thing is, I can't get into the refugee sector. And even if I could, I'm not sure I could find her. I've been here for weeks, hoping to see her face. All I've done is watch my credits burn away to nothing. The Exchange has got the place barricaded with thugs. They're putting the squeeze on the whole sector, trying to crush the spirit out of the remaining refugees. Now I'm almost cleaned out. I burned the last of my fuel and my freight just getting here. The Exchange promised me a job shuttling freight via cargo cruiser, and I'm close to taking them up on it. Yeah? And what's it gonna cost me? Well, I'm not gonna turn away an offer of help. All right, stranger. If you can find her, then you'll have my thanks.
Johnny Nikolai Pinachi, Papa Donachi.
This is Serico territory. Get out of here before we space you. Got it? You've made a dangerous enemy today. You're tough to have made it this far. It's too bad you're not going any farther. I don't make threats. I only state the facts. You've played target practice with my men. Your leaving isn't an option.
kavana takalu, kavana mi donki krato. Rasha tu gnolia yakta adesa uba lia jetu fuk. Kavadumpa munsuru kupla lia wa. Bo bagaragawanda ya itua ulwanji uma. Ya tuka uwanrika chotin wanima orata wakata chiluma lispa. Tu nita manja yuma lorda wata no sanazika. To vrekun mili, to vrekun mili wosa slima po guanga samoana muta. Kavadumpa munsuru kupla lia wa. Bo bagaragawanda ya itua ulwanji uma. To vrekun mili wosa slima po guanga samoana muta. Da hupa, bo sakurata, go jujutu yoke. Hiata yamba wajiake yukito tune. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora. Ta yaita, ta bo sananhansata. Da hupa, bo sakurata, go jujutu yoke. Hiata yamba wajiake yukito tune. Doci nu sada, din eu cu Juju Piti atunto no... Non si cuno vosh tu ma buc, sa mina nu va rupe, mi ti si mingro a gomunto? Ca oana bota iunta tanga kinamatora, ta iaita... Ta bosan ansa ta, ta kometa ka plaia justing, miki gongo beaste, kun grabi la king no mula ra kichi kuta krasa kisha. Unta chivita inka ki kraya na chawanga kone. Greetings. Are you the spacer we were told about? Oh, we were expecting one of the pilots from the docks sometime soon to come and get us off Nar Shadal. He's late. I don't know where he is. Thank you. To be honest, I don't even know his name. Some guy named Planor said he had a pilot friend who would take us for 500 credits. 50 credits? Why? I was afraid of that. I knew I shouldn't have trusted him. Thank you. I'm beginning to lose hope that we'll ever get out of here. Another refugee? I'm sad to see another join our ranks. I lost my husband Lutra long ago in the Jedi Civil War. What? Lutra's here? Please! You must help me get to him! The exchange is circling the sector like Shyrax. If one of us should slip free, they will hunt us down and punish us. No one knows. I think they're trying to starve us into submission. Then they can make us slaves on the Hut Spice planets, or disposable workers in the Tabana gas factories on Slaheron. But other refugees think the Exchange is looking for someone. Some even say it's a Jedi, but that's insane. No Jedi would ever come to a waste pit like Narshada. It's just a rumor. I don't even believe it. Sometimes I wonder if it's just a rumor someone dreamed up to make us suffer. Deal with the Exchange? You might as well wrestle with a planet. This branch of the exchange is run by Sequesh, a Quarren with ties to Visquis himself. Visquis is the exchange boss here on Narshada, at least in this sector. You don't want to cross him. There's usually a battalion of hired guns lurking in the shadows behind him. Please, don't cause any trouble on my behalf. If you harm any of the exchange here, they'll take it out on us a hundredfold. Are you one of Sakwesh's men? Did you take my daughter? The Overseer, Sakwesh, 
He took my daughter to sell to the huts, all because I told him I could not pay his tribute. I owe Saquesh 600 credits. I, I don't have enough. Thank you. But I uh, won't he track us down and kidnap her again? Thank you. Thank you. Please hurry. After the huts have her, it will be impossible to find her. Welcome, traveler. My name's Husef. Uh, I try to look out for the other refugees. You wiped out all of the Serico on your own? <laughs> Impressive. You've made things easier for us around here. If you could convince the exchange to take some of the pressure off, that would really be a big help. Thanks. Good luck. Deep back, I am ill. Contagious, the others say. Really? The others say I have the plague. I'm feeling a little better. Thank you. And what is it you think you have accomplished? If you seek to aid everyone that suffers in the galaxy, you will only weaken yourself and weaken them. It is the internal struggles, when fought and won on their own, that yield the strongest rewards. You stole that struggle from them, cheapened it. If you ever weakened yourself in such a way for me, I would rather suffer and die than have you demean yourself for me. That is not who you are, who you can become. Then you do not know yourself, and you will die a fool's death before you are ever tested. I fear that will be your undoing. Then your allies are your weakness, and if they die, you die with them. And because of that, where once the Sith had but one target, now there are many, and you frustrate my attempts to protect you. If you do not wish to hear it, then you will remain deaf to everything around you, and that shall be punishment enough. Ah, oh, I grow weary of this. Perhaps time will allow my words to take root if your common sense will not permit it. Hey, you look like a spacer. You work at the docks? Because if you need a crew, I'm your man. I flew during the Mandalorian Wars, and again during the Jedi Civil War. Yes, and look where I ended up. You need a pilot's license to fly the freighters here. They're tough to get without sponsorship. I'd greatly appreciate that.
Who are you? One of Saquesh's calf hounds? Adana. My mom made the mistake of telling Saquesh he couldn't sell me to the huts. So he took me. Really? Oh, why didn't you say so? Oh, sorry about those things I said to you. Uh, you do look a little like a calf hound, though. I'll go find mom. Kick him once in the tentacles for me. Sir, I hear you. The honor I mine. hear you.
To battle. You are no Back again? Is there anything I can do for you? What? What? How did you do this? I barely know you, and you've brought me word of my husband, and then a free path to him. It's almost too good to be true. You've given me my husband, stranger. My husband, my life. Thank you. Thanks for taking care of Sakwesh. I fear what the exchange might do next, though. You've already helped us greatly. Life should start improving for us. Thank you. 
Let's see, three bricks of spice out to Elysia, then with a the turnaround, um, no, no, that won't work. Uh, come back, here so soon? I wasn't expecting you for, uh, well, not now, anyway. The genius shall be long, the rowage is three minutes to touch. Yeah, well, I, uh, <laughs> I tried to explain that, you see, but, um... I had no choice. These, uh, these thugs showed up. And, uh, they said that you could go space yourselves. And uh, I was like, no, no, this is the Red Eclipse, and... Haven't heard anything more yet. I'll come seek you out. Kuriko asotoa e ringe free te de tucha or samba sukna kapla wiye tinya tal chiro runta gamsa. De shunko chova ninja chimba taxi juju juju pitiye prim taba nin soju.
Dalia. Krynok też działa. Dzieni się w nauki drawić i w najmniejszym czasie. Krynok też działa. Dzieni się w najmniejszym czasie. Something up? All right, what did you want to know? Yeah, that's a surprise. Did he say I owed him credits too? No, because you're asking about it. If I wanted to tell you anything, I would have come and told you. Anything else? Is this an interrogation? If so, you're terrible at it. Especially for an ex-Jedi, or whatever you are. Why don't you just crawl in my head and try to dig out whatever you're looking for rather than asking about it? You know what? I helped you get off, Dragas. If I hadn't been there, you wouldn't have even gotten off the administration level. I'm trying to help you. I don't know why I'm bothering. Yeah, well, I... I still helped you. Sort of. Maybe you shouldn't look a free Ronto in the mouth before you buy it. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand it half the time. You know what? Not once have I asked you about the Mandalorian Wars. Not once. I heard about Duxon. Everyone has. I heard about Serico, and I sure as hell know about Malachor V. What makes you think you've got the right to interrogate me on anything? You've got plenty of lives to answer for. All you Jedi do. How did you even live with yourself after Malachor? Is that why you went back to the Jedi Council? Hoping they'd kill you? Wasn't it? 
Maybe you thought they'd forgive you. Sure, you might have thought they'd execute you. But Jedi don't kill, do they? At least not their prisoners. Maybe you were counting on it when you went back in chains. So you got off easy. You were exiled, brushed under the cargo ramp. Another dirty little Jedi secret. I'll tell you, all those Jedi at Malachor, they deserved it. Every last one of them. Because Jedi lie, and they manipulate, and every act of charity or kindness they do, you can drag it out squirming into the light and see it for what it is. The galaxy doesn't need Jedi arrogance or Jedi hypocrisy anymore. At least the Sith are honest about what they're killing for. The Jedi are pacifists, except in times of war. They're teachers, except when it comes to telling their students the truth. And when they save you, it's only so you can suffer more. Whatever, just leave me alone. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with you anyway. Well, don't get too attached to me. I don't like it. That depends on your perspective. I have this habit. I'm a deserter. It's what I do. Served in both of them. Against the Mandalorians, before and after Revan, and again, when Revan declared war on the Jedi. I did, up until the Republic officers began to betray their oaths to the Republic and side with Revan, Admiral Kareth, Mon Halan, General Darid, and all the rest. Right after that final battle at Malachor, I was right there with the rest of the defectors, because it was the right thing to do. No, it wasn't. We needed the Jedi during the Mandalorian Wars, more than anything. The Mandalorians were slaughtering us by the millions. The millions. You were at Serico when they turned the Starib cities into glass craters. At Duro, when basilisk war droids rained like meteors onto the orbiting cities. And when the Mandalorians set fire to the Zoxan Plains on Ares III, the fires that still burn. Without the Jedi who turned on the Council, without you, the Republic would have lost the war, and we would all be Mandalorian slaves or corpses. If that's what you want to call knowing when to fight and when to kill, then yes. But you can't really break down people into Sith and Jedi and expect everything to make sense. We were loyal to Revan. That was enough. He saved us. After Malachor, after the Mandalorian Wars, that's when the Sith teachings started spreading through the ranks. We knew where our loyalties lay. To the Jedi who came to help us, not the ones who sat back on Dantooine and Coruscant, watching us die. So when those same Jedi who watched us die decided to start fighting us during the Jedi Civil War, we fought back. I fought back. I didn't fight Jedi. I killed them. A lot of them. People say killing Jedi is hard. It's not. You just have to be smart about it. No blasters, no getting close to them, no attacking them directly when you can gun down their allies instead. There's ways of gassing them, drugging them, making them lose control, torturing them. I was really good at it. What's worse is that killing them wasn't the best thing. Making them fall. Making them see our side of it. That was the best. I taught myself techniques. It's hard for Jedi to sense what you're really thinking if you throw up walls of strong emotions and feelings. Lust, impatience, cowardice. Most Jedi awareness doesn't cruise beyond the surface feelings to see what's deeper. And I was good at that, throwing up walls. And my superiors knew it. Sometimes the Jedi on our side wouldn't even realize I was there. Part of it? Maybe it was always me. It's hard to tell sometimes. I haven't known who I am for years. I wasn't the only one. I know you left at the Mandalorian Wars, so you don't know much about what went on behind the scenes in the Jedi Civil War. But Revan understood one thing. 
The real battle was going to be fought between the Jedi on both sides. That was the only battle that mattered. Whoever had the most, the strongest Jedi were going to win the Civil War. If Revan couldn't convert Jedi, Revan would kill them. So Revan trained elite Sith units into assassination squads, whose duty was to go out and capture enemy Jedi. I was in special units trained to do this. Yeah, Revan had plans for all Jedi. I think it was important that the Jedi see his side of things, the Sith teachings. Revan wanted to break them, and then have them join him. One day, I decided not to do it anymore, so I left. Ended up on Nar Shadda, became someone else. Because you've killed Jedi too. Different circumstances, but you have a bigger body count than I ever did. And I've been with you only a short time. Enough to know that as soon as someone signs on with you, they haven't got long to live. You got history, and anyone who travels with you doesn't. And maybe I want somebody to know who I was in case a story needs to be set straight. Maybe you understand. I think there's been enough lies and truth for today. Let's just leave it for now. Take your time. I have. Something up? Alright, what did you want to know? No, I don't... Alright, what... Sounds good to me. Yes, General? Sure do, General. Just to remember. Something else I can... Sure do, General. Just to remember. Something else I... Sure do, General. Just to remember. Something else I... Sure do, General. Just to remember. Something else I can...
I hear you. I hear you.
What's going on? Just say Say the word. What's going on? Come on. Tenemos, tenemos la nariz, no 
Femco e Mariam da Watasito in Sula Raka Rakachata. Tamasoki.
Manos in the Rakeith. What up? Femko in the Rayam, the Watasito in Sula Raka. Donos Imaragith, wana rakona chi drum ka sa inchobin sasha, dosimana rachata. Bota bota su, malam pasti ramah dorin kumara wan. Bota kawan bota tak wah kangkang dewa, buta ke anjji maliba. Kuas Mahawika si wawanta mo ku ika munsoba wakama nurawa. Me? Jawana masarangka ma ramazurata. Keso jus krita lorsa. Nyu maca fu eko miko jira. Tahu popo tenyo go jucho picha. Gwen taba ni soju. Nurutoga proto lala shishi. Usually there are many players who seek to play, but you are fortunate to have caught me at a moment of quiet.
I fear it is because I am simply not a skilled Kazakh player. I'm afraid protocol droid skills and language interpretation are not something that lend themselves to Kazakh and probability. Why? I cannot help myself. In fact, every time I seek to find the answer to that question, I'm consumed with the need to come here and play Pizak. I'm concerned that the problem may lie with my memory core. Without routine memory wipes, you know, such degradation is known to occur, leading to instabilities. Yes, well, I am somewhat embarrassed by the whole thing, but thank you for the support. I find it difficult to share such inadequacies in front of other droids. I fear my obsession with Pizak is one such corruption. Why, I do not... Would you like to play Pizak? Like I was saying, I do not... Would you like to play Pizak? Oh. I fear it is... Why? I can't... I'm concerned... Yes, well, I fear my... Obs I am not sure I wish it fixed. I do find some degree of satisfaction in playing. Would you like to play? Why, you are quite correct. If you are indeed skilled, then I would not mind a quick look. Oh, hello. I fear it. Why? I I'm concerned. Yes, I fear my. I am not sure I wish it. Oh, I fear it is because I am. Why? I I am concerned. Yes, I fear my obs. I am not sure. I suppose you're right. Oh, that feels much better. I cannot believe I went on and on about such a foolish game. Thank you, truly thank you. Yeah?
We just got this message on the comm link. Looks like trouble. I think this is something everyone will want to hear. The droid's the one who picked up the message. He's got it all ready to display. Well, good thing it's not a trap. It may be a trap, but traps work both ways. This Visquis, his kind is spread through the lower reaches of Narshadar, and he may have information. But the choice is yours. If you go, you will have to go alone. It's just off the docks, near one of the far traffic pylons. He's got you at a disadvantage there, though. The place is filled with cyanogen gas. One whiff of that, and it'll be the last breath you take. You'll need something to allow you to breathe there, and disguise you from the other patrons. You're right. Without breathing and skin protection, you'll be dead in seconds. Besides, you'll need a full bodysuit if you want to remain disguised. Like I said, a human walking around in there isn't gonna get a warm reception. Can't bring any droids in there either. There's a lot of electromagnetic activity in the area. Screws with comlinks and behavior cores. Don't be surprised if your auto map starts showing static either. Well, I wouldn't keep him waiting. If you got his attention, you probably attracted the attention of someone else. Haven't heard anything more. Hey, look. I wanted to tell you. Be careful. I won't be able to contact you via the comlink if something happens. And I'm betting that Squidhead knows it. Look, take these. They're healing packs. If your suit gets breached, you'll need to inject them fast if you don't want your lungs to seize up. And trust me, once the seizures start, you'll be dead. Watch yourself, and don't be too long. I'll keep an eye out here until you return. And I know just the place. So, you're the big Jedi that everyone's been talking about. You don't look so tough to me. I thought you Jedi were supposed to be smart, and here you are, running around Narshida, sticking your lightsaber into everyone's business. What, were you planning to save everyone on this moon? You're attracting more attention than a fleet of Sith warships. I'm Mira. 
I'm the best bounty hunter in this system, and that's not me bragging, that's fact. I had you in my sights ever since you landed. I've been watching you run all over the refugee sector like a bantha, and for someone with a price on their head as high as yours, you sure don't know how to keep a low profile. Look, I know that squidhead Visquis sent you a message to meet him in the Jack Jack Tar. He works for Godo, and it's a trap. I'm betting he's gonna lure you in there, start a fight, and then he's gonna wrap you up and deliver you to Goto. Dead, claiming you attacked him. Well, whatever your reasons are, the fact you're meeting with Visquis is what I want to talk about. If I know about it, that means everybody else on this moon knows about it, or will soon enough. And when that happens, the bounty hunter truce is off. That means things are gonna get real ugly real quick. Now, I don't think you get it. They're not gonna come after you. I think your friends are the ones in trouble. This sure beats staying on the ship. A few drinks to keep me on my toes, a few games of Pazak to keep the mind alert. Should be enough to keep me out of trouble until our fearless leader straightens things out. Give me a hit of Juma. Keep him coming. Well, looks like staying on the ship was a bad idea after all. So... I don't think I caught your names. Uh, you two work here, or...? Yeah? What happened to your master? No, actually, I'm here protecting someone, keeping them out of trouble, by acting as a distraction for people looking to harm her. Why don't you two shut us try it and we'll see what happens? Do not go here to put us aboard. Chris Sorcha went in the main punta. Lord Chawata, you man, ni hold on to you, my des. That bota no chi tagua ita. No so copa puta. Brentaba ni sucho. So, you're the big Jedi that everyone's been talking I thought you Jedi... What, were you planning to save every... I'm Mira. I've been watching you run... Look, I know... I'm betting he's gonna... 
Well, whatever you if I know about it, and when that happens... I think your friends are the ones in trouble. This sure beats staying on the ship. A few drinks to keep me on my toes, a few games of Pazak to keep the mind alert. Should be enough to keep me out of trouble until our fearless leader straightens things out. Give me a hit of Juma, and keep him coming. Well, looks like staying on the ship was a bad idea after all. So, I don't think I caught your names. Uh, you two work here, or...? Yeah? What...? No, actually... Why don't you two shut it? That's it. The bounty hunter truce is off. That means this place is gonna get real bad, real fast. I better get back to the ship. Warn the others. I don't know why a Jedi would come here. There's so much noise on this moon. Of course, it makes detecting a Jedi difficult. But to be in a place where one drowns in the Force, why would a Jedi wish that? A simple question, to which I ask another. Why should a Jedi want to hide? Hey, we need to move out. What do you mean? The truce between the bounty hunters and Nar Shadda is off. There's gonna be a war. A trap in the Jek Jek Tar is bad enough, but having a hundred bounty hunters on your back is something else. She was told to meet alone. We cannot disrupt their meeting until the alien reveals the information he has. Look, we need to move. They're coming after us, not the Exile. These hunters will be tracking the Exile as well. We must warn her. Yeah, you're right. But I'm guessing we're in a lot more trouble than he is. Look at Kamara and also run with no chubby. Do Rantamana Sobu, the Ranamo Sibu and Asarans, Krema Suku, Loka Kamaran and also run with no Chabi. Do Rantamana Sobu, 
Anybody here catch that? All I understood was very. I think he wanted us to give up the general to his poorly trained collection of bounty hunters. Ah, well, that would explain it. Which one do you want? I'll take the stupid one, who decided to threaten us rather than shoot us when he had the chance. This is one of my safe houses. It's, it's not too pretty to look at, but keeps away prying eyes. Yeah, well, it's one of those trade-offs. All the freighter exhaust from the docks, you know. Some aliens actually like breathing it, if you can believe it. You could say I've gotten used to it. This is actually perfume compared to how the rest of the docks smell. You know, Visquis is arranging a trap for you in the Jek Jek Tar. No surprise there. Thing is, he intends to cut the bounty hunters out of the loop and deliver you to Goto personally. <laughs> Not smart from where I'm standing. Well, for one thing, you're going to stay here and I'm going to meet with Visquis instead. Well, that smell you noticed when you came in, it's probably filtering through your lungs right now. I upped the dosage in case you had some Jedi training to resist poisons. Anybody without olfactory blockers, like I have, is gonna start feeling dizzy and eventually fall unconscious. Good night, Jedi. Let me just take that environment suit, and I'll be back soon.
Good eyes, Hanhar. No wonder you're still number two on Narshada. Yeah, and maybe you'd like to explain why you've decided to backstab Goto and claim the Jedi for yourself. You signed on with Boga the Hutt? Bisquis, you're dumber than I thought. There's no way Goto won't find out. Yeah, right. I'm not telling you where the Jedi is. It's my bounty. And that means she's under my protection. I know you can hear me. The numbness you feel should be wearing off soon, but not before we've spoken. When I first heard you were on Nar Shaddaa, I didn't quite believe it. I didn't think anyone could track me here, but I see I underestimated you. I've been trying to discover your purpose in coming here, but it eludes me. Some of your actions have aided the exchange. Others have thwarted them. I did not know your intentions when you stood before us at your trial so long ago, and I do not know them now. But whatever they are, you have succeeded in drawing me out. If anything, you should know that your actions have convinced me I can stand by and watch no longer. Whatever harm the exchange harbors against Jedi, I will not let another suffer for it. A friend has gone to meet Visquis in your stead, and I intend to rescue her. I will return shortly, or not at all. If you have come to this moon for answers, or for revenge, then you will follow me.
Dobri Chubabash, Kitskala, Dorcha, Wata, Tokyoki, Ninja. Hoto non sa nona, prontangua ni mononta saka. Dobri Chubabash, Kitskala, Dorcha, Wata, Tokyoki, Ninja. Hoto non sa nona, prontangua ni mononta saka. Paposca duana, chichuba musca techada, nikili con eope do punta crita, capunara gewana bota yutoga cana rodara. Cavadumpa munsur cupla liawa, bo bagaragawanda yaitua ulwanjiuma. Dovrei con mille vu... Kawana bota, yunta tanga kinamatora. Ta yaita, ta bosana nansata. Munga chinor, ta imbrei wanachik. Drumba bambua, conti chan munka. Kavadumpa kuswaka ta yamuka ata. Cavadumpa munsur cupla liawa, bo bagaragawanda yaitua ulwanjiuma. Da hupa, bo sakurata, go jujutu yoki, hiata yamba wajiaki yukito tune. Dovre kun mili wosa slima po wanga sawana, nuta. Conta chiwita inca que craia na chawanga cone. Cavadumpa munsur cupla liawa. Bo bagaragawanda yaitua ulwanjiuma. Cavadumpa munsur cupla liawa. Bo bagaragawanda yaitua ulwanjiuma.
Babuska Dwana. Kavadumpa Munsuru Kupla Li. Wana Muchata. Marawaka Jo. Yetia Buki. Mawaji Yoba Litbani Kaintini Tuni Rasiko Masteranyu. Ta come tak, plagia giusting, miki gon go beaste. Un grabila kino mulara ki circuta grasa kisha. Munga cinorta imbrei wanachik, drumba bambua, conti chan munka, cavadumba kuswaka ta yamukata. Munga cinor ta imbrei wanachik, drumba bambua, conti chan munka, cavadumba kuswaka ta yamukata. Chone murle ra, ton kinge ba no jansaka nikarashka. Tancha nik de mau imbo granda mi bilan. Ta come tak, plagia justing, miki gon go beaste. Un grabila kino mulara ki circuta grasa kisha. Tak wancha mori ciwa, mufala wa ni bobo wish yo tkuna sita dorcho ni soba wata. Kavadumba munsuru kupla liya wa, bo bagaragawanda ya itua ulwanji yuma. Tovrekun mili wosa slima po wanga samwana muta.
Aida, I didn't think I'd ever find you. I can't believe you're here before me. The destruction of Tilos? I can't even tell you what happened after. Being shuttled from system to system, barely one planet ahead of the Sith fleet. Shh. We can talk about it later. You have my thing. I can only hope you have as much luck at what you're looking for. It's strange you came by when you did. I was right at the edge of deciding whether to give up, turning it over in my mind. And suddenly you walked through the door and gave me the answer I needed to hear. I'll remember that. Thanks again, stranger. Cavadumpe masuraku, popayi botenya, tace morosa gamsa, javas gobo sabjo, regiso carve noxo, mochi tosa sagrindeo. Herinocho, nina radocha, cavanadumpa cancarebe. Chitaris bakoki. Thank you. 
It is an old technique similar to the healing trance. Some Jedi can hold their breath for hours, even days.
Moranda do rei Makasi Waba, do a chessin to mes, Taras mucho canoe me, do nasabu. Dana wekezi, chazoto gutso, the number we knows. Such a ranto notch, vanata gurka cheno, burlacha no, burta tranta, chuyunto. Sirinento, saraka mahvan, relikenito, Nina Mrabanka gona chi, drum baba nakares. Kawana bota atagua kanka diwa. You talk about when she you might leave ba. You as maha wika si you a wanta mo go ika mon soba. Waka ma no ra wa. Kawana bota atagwa kanka di wa. You talk about when she you might leave ba. You as maha wika si you a wanta mo go ika mon soba. Waka ma no ra wa. Kava dunta ma sura ku papa yi botenya tache morota kamsa javas ko bo sabjo riji so karve nokso mochi tosa sa grindeyo. The whole potato go juicy picture. When Taba ni sochu, no talk about to la la shishi. Juba dosa jiba cha, ratak mansan, tokosha na chitolo. Kawana bota atagwa kanka diwa. You talk about onji you maliba. You es mahawika si you awanta mo go ika monsoba. Wakama nurawa.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Does it, Hanhar? I don't want to kill you, but I will if you don't get out of my way.
Stand back.
Stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Stand back.
amusing Jedi specimen you are. Great. Need to get out of here. Your friend has been captured by Goto. Awaken, beast. I have saved your life, beast. That makes it mine. Kneel. Because I need you to hunt. Beast, this prey is something you have chased all your life. You are born and bred to it, like no predator before you. No, that you shall not do. You will not bring harm to the exile, and if you do, Beast, I shall break you. Even your madness will not save you if you bring harm to the exile. Know this. that you have twisted with your hate, I felt it within you. I shall promise you this, beast. Unlike the red-maned Huntress, as long as you are loyal, I shall never show you mercy, no pity. But most of all, I promise you an end to your debt. Hunt her, pursue her, kill her, and ending her life will end your debt to me. <laughs> The pain will pass. I was able to heal some of the wounds, but the rest must remain. You will need that pain when you travel, and it will give you strength for the hunt to come. I will tell you where you must go. If you survive that place, then she will come to you. But first, I must prepare you for what is to come. Uh, you're running a little late. Your friend already walked into a trap in the Jack Jack Tar. We took out Visquis, but Godo has her. And that means no bounty for me. There's no way to get her back. No one knows how to reach Godo except Visquis. And that squid had died in the Jack Jack Tar. The only way to reach Goto is if we had a Jedi. But now, he's got your friend. He doesn't have anybody else he wants captured. He's got a cloaking device. He's the one that arranges the meetings on his ship, and until then, he can't be found. Trust me, if anyone knew how to track his ship, he'd have every bounty hunter and criminal on Nar Shaddaa gunning for it. If you were hunting for Godo's yacht, your freighter would be flying blind. Well, unless it was one of Voga the Hutt's cargo ships. Then it would be snapped up by Godo pretty quick. Godo's been preying on Vaga's freighters for a while now. It's the reason Vaga's had to haul his bulk up here to Nar Shaddaa from Nel Hutta. Even with all the traffic around Nar Shaddaa, Godo seems to always know which ones are Vaga's, and his ship just snaps them up. Probably does it by tracking their transponder codes, but no one knows how he's getting them. I guess. 
you need to get the codes first, then retrofit your ship so it had the right transponder signal. Problem is, Vogus shut down the droid warehouse until he can find out who's been leaking the codes. You'd have to be a droid to get in there. I must ask you how you acquired this particular droid. I see. There should be no problems then. Credits will be transferred to your account as usual. I am sorry, but only authorized cargo droids are allowed into the warehouse. I cannot permit you to enter due to the sensitive cargo. No. In fact, I do not have you on my list of Codin's acquisitions. How did you get in here? I see. Well, I have no current use for you. I'll assign you to C6E3. He needs the help to make up for his inferior programming. If you do not wish to comply with these instructions, I can have you given a memory wipe and behavioral reprogramming. C6E3, you will be assisting him. Enter the warehouse and report to C7E3 for assignment. I certainly hope that rude C7 unit didn't send you over here. Those more recent models have no etiquette programming whatsoever. I think he should be replaced or shipped down to maintenance to direct droids there, but I cannot seem to convince my masters of the logic of the request. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, despite what others would say. A number designation for a C7 unit means far more than an integer increase. Some droids undergo radical changes with each generation. Each numeric jump in sequence can have wide-ranging changes in functionality and temperament. But then, you are a new model yourself. I wouldn't expect you to understand how it feels. Now, was there something I could help you with? That C7 droid absolutely infuriates me. Needs help to do my job, do I? I would be happy to help you, but as long as that C7 unit is perched at the door, I can't. Well, if the C7 unit were to be disabled, my programming would require me to take over his responsibilities in his absence. Yes, I would be willing to give you access to the next room. Yes, what is it? You can't be serious. I am not in need of deactivation. What are you talking about? What's all the 
promotion. Oh, I see. Well, that will show him. Obsolete piece of junk, indeed. Yes, of course. I'll get that open right away. Just a moment. There. You startled me. What are you doing here? I monitor the transponder codes of all ships leaving the docks, then transmit departure information for any of Fog of the Hutt's freighters. The information is sent to a remote computer system. Oh, I see. In that case, I will upload the transponder codes to you. And here's the blank transponder card you need. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to monitoring the traffic. It is important that relevant departure information is relayed as quickly as possible. Who are you? You're not supposed to be here. statement. You have the list of Voga's launch codes. You will give these to us now, or else we will be forced to take drastic action. Surprised statement. You are foolish to think we will allow you to take that information back to your master. Amused query. I think you will find the odds are somewhat in our favor. Now will you be giving us the codes, or not? Incredulous statement. Then we will have to take them from you, which I assure you was our preference to begin with.
Wait, where are you going? You are not authorized to leave the warehouse. Hey, it's our astromech droid. I thought you got sold. I don't believe this. He says he's got the transponder codes that Godo's using to hijack Voga's freighters. We can change the ID signature of the Ebon Hawk and get to Godo's yacht that way. We could go to the repair shop by the landing pad to overhaul the Ebon Hawk's codes. From there, we should make a nice target for Godo. Count me in. Yeah, right. You're the one who wanted to sell her to Godo in the first place. Yeah, and I don't like being cheated, trust me. Goto's yacht is going to have some pretty heavy defenses. You're gonna need all the help you can get. Dare <laughs> I was expecting someone taller. I hope you are not in too much pain to hear my words and understand them. I am Goto, one of the officials representing a percentage of non-sanctioned trading here in both the YouTube system and Republic space. And I had a question for you. Are you a Jedi? precious minutes in granting you this audience and I do not wish to waste any more. I have gone to considerable expense and effort to bring you here. It is because I have a job for you. Yes, but I am not in the habit of asking for things, and you were so difficult to find even after that small incident on Paragus. There is something important to me I need protected. The Republic, it is broken. What happened on Paragus?
Nexus has set in motion events that I can no longer control. Not to be melodramatic, but I fear it has broken the galaxy irrevocably. This has occupied much of my attention, and there seems to be no predictable way to resolve the situation. In one standard month, the Republic will collapse. Not due to war or secession, but because it lacks the infrastructure to support itself. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Sith won the Jedi Civil War. Even with their supposed victory, the war left the Republic on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and help solidify the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events, as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. There is something moving in the galaxy that lies beyond the ability of my instruments to detect or predict. I believe it to be a legacy of the Sith, but I have been unable to determine the source. Whatever this presence is, it is staging strikes at key figures throughout the Republic, and through some unknown means, it is causing the destruction of worlds. Qatar, a Miraluka world in the Mid-Rim was one such place. I have reason to suspect there was a gathering of Jedi on that world when it was rendered lifeless. I cannot find any pattern in these attacks, and it is a source of frustration to me. There is some clue, however, that perhaps the Jedi are linked to these attacks, or that the targets are significant in some way I have yet to discover. You misunderstand me. I do not wish to stop the Sith any more than I wish to stop the Jedi. It is simply important to me that the infighting amongst these Jedi religious branches be resolved so the galaxy may be put back together. I do not care which one triumphs. I only want the universe to settle down for a while, catch its breath. All these constant crises are getting somewhat repetitive. You could say I am something of a patriot. Although I was unable to serve during the troubles with the Mandalorians or against the aggressors known as Malak and Revan, I am able and willing to serve now. The problem is I can find no side to choose. Both are hidden from me as they seem to be hiding from each other. Irritating. It is like a Dejaric board where neither player can see the other nor see all the pieces. It is not a fair game, an equitable game. Azak bores me. I often suspect my opponent of cheating. I prefer predictable games such as Galactic Economics. Excellent. It really is in your best interest, you know. There is no margin for error when I say that these Sith seek to murder you and all Jedi everywhere. They have been quite deficient. And when they dispose of you, there will be nothing left to stop them, and the galaxy will fall under their influence. Ah, well. There is where we are at cross purposes. I cannot set you free. You have a tendency to cause dangerous repercussions wherever you go, and I would rather keep those to a minimum. The galaxy really is a fragile place right now. I am a businessman. The Republic needs stability to survive, prosper, and grow. Whether it is led by the Sith or supported by the Jedi is of no consequence to me. It is the proximity alarm. We are under attack. Somehow, your allies have found you. Unexpected. You will remain here, under guard. I must see to the defense of my ship.
Just say the word. word. Ready? Time to take you down to size. I hear you. Let me take care of this. Pure Pazak.
take care of this. Pure Bazaar. More with that game, Club. More with that game, Club. I hear you. Ready? Stand back.
came from. Everyone down. More where that came from. Say the word. Ready? Time to take you down to size.
time to even the odds. Let's move out. I hear you. Let's move out. What is this place? Some kind of control center?
Just say the word. Let's move out.
I hear you. <sighs> Not again. The Hopopo Tenyo go Jucho Picha, Gwen Taba ni Sochu, Norotoga Proto Lala Shishi, Jubatosa Jibacha, Ratakman San, Tokosha na Chitolo, Kavadumpe Masuraku, Popayi Botenya, Tachemorota Gamsa, Javas Gobo Sabjo, Rijiso Karvenokso, Mochitosa Sagrindeo. Run? I didn't run from you two shut as last time, and this time I'm gonna make sure you stay down. Where would that came from? Where would that came from?
Just say the word. I hear you. Let's move out.
I can't believe we just blew up Godot's yacht. That's gonna destabilize crime throughout this whole sector. Yeah, well, you'll understand if I hold back the tears. You don't understand. Crime in the YouTube system, it's like the economy. Plus the power vacuum. Even if Voga gets up and running again, the system is gonna be feeling the effects for years to come. Yeah, well, at least we didn't find that Jedi Master with the weird name. Is this Kyle? Um, well, that's not true. I already found him. Actually, he found me first. He hired me to watch out for you, keep Goto off your back until he could meet with you. We'll need to head back to Narshada, that safe house off the docks. I said I'd meet up with him there if we ran into any trouble. What do you want now? If you thought to escape my notice so easily, you would be wrong. As a token of my goodwill, I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. I'm afraid I do not understand what you mean. As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. So, you have returned from exile. Kavar thought you might, if only to wander your old battlegrounds. But I did not think you would come to Nar Shaddaa. Still, you were always a difficult one to read, both when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. I do not know. It was a sense he had, and he had served in war as you had. Perhaps he thought he understood you. Or maybe he simply hoped he did. 
He felt you were the key to understanding the threat we face. The others were not so certain, but so many of them are gone now, as you no doubt know. Uh, he sensed some connection between you and many of the worlds touched by war. He thought by traveling to such places, he could achieve understanding. No doubt. I think the answers will provide us both with some measure of peace. I have kept secrets for far too long. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now. There are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. Atris, but I had thought she had gone to Qatar with the others. Yes, she holds the last of the Jedi teachings. It is good she survived. I had not finished my investigations here, and I did not wish to reveal myself. There was nothing I could do. What I can tell you, I will. It is a long story, but there is no harm in you knowing and someone should know. Only a handful of us remained after the Jedi Civil War, barely a hundred in number. Then, even that hundred began to vanish, in places where the Force seemed blind. The only pattern we determined is that when Jedi gathered, they were seen no more. At the last Jedi Conclave on the Miraluka world of Qatar, the entire planet was wiped out, an entire race destroyed because the Jedi chose to gather there. It was only then that we realized we were facing something far more powerful than we knew how to fight. We could not allow the fact that when we gathered, we placed everything around us at risk. A Jedi's life is sacrifice, but we could not allow our presence or actions to endanger others. And we could not fight an enemy that will not reveal itself. But any Jedi, anyone who was strong in the Force, who attempted to track down such a threat, vanished without a trace. It does, but you must step back to see it. Whatever this threat was, it was targeting us and everything around us. Yet it was somehow weak enough that it was afraid to confront us openly. If it believed us defeated, then perhaps it would finally show itself. It was a faint hope, but it was the best we had. It was Kavar's plan. He was always the greatest tactician among us, and had seen war more than the rest of us. Very well. I had thought perhaps that here upon the Smuggler's Moon, I might find some evidence of the threat we faced. The bounties on Jedi and their disappearance. I did not believe the two were connected, but there was a chance. And the strong currents of life here on Nar Shaddaa make perceiving a Force user difficult. I could use it to cloak my movements and watch without being discovered. Very well. We told you it was because you followed Revan to war. But you ask, because you are not certain of that answer, nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order, because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled, and if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing. 
But it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not. And I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Very well. Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it. And although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. Until then, I can say nothing. Very well. Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis, or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You form such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Vrook could not ignore it, which is saying something. That is most unusual and unnatural. I have never heard of a bond of such strength. There were a few within the Order who knew more than I did of such bonds, but their students were few, lost in the Mandalorian Wars. It was rumored that Revan studied such bonding deeply, both through the Jedi histories and with certain teachers, before he left the Order and went to war. I do not know. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the Force. To break a bond, your feelings would have to change, or one of you would have to die. But even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... It would simply be empty, a wound. One of you would have to die, but even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... It would simply... Now, now I must take up the role I was ready to cast aside. This threat has finally revealed itself, and we Jedi will need to stand together. I did not speak fully of what I have felt. Staying on Nar Shaddaa, it is an exile of sorts, one that I have chosen. I, too, lost a Padawan on Malachor, not to the battle, but to the alternative, to the teachings that Revan brought from the unknown regions. And I was not the only Jedi Master to watch a student turn on them. No, no, they were not to blame, but many of the Order did so. It was a difficult time, a time of strong emotion. Perhaps the Council, perhaps the Order itself, had grown arrogant in their teachings. It is easy to cast blame, but it is perhaps time the Order accepted responsibility for their teachings and their arrogance and come to recognize that perhaps we are flawed. Not once did I hear one of the Council claim responsibility for Revan, for Exar Kun, for Ulik, for Malak, or for you. Yet, you were the only one who came back from the wars to face our judgment. And rather than attempting to understand why you did what you did, we punished you instead. Our one chance to see where we had gone wrong, and we cast it aside. And now, that decision has come back to us and may carry with it our destruction. Perhaps there is something wrong in us, in our teachings, and though I tried, I could not cause that thought to leave me, so I left the Council. And I was not the only one. That is why many scattered, and why many in the Republic do not trust us, and why we do not trust ourselves. Make no mistake, I am no Jedi. This is the end, you see. After this, there will be nothing, and I think it will be for the best. Do you wish to do battle now? I have nothing more to say.
It provides no comfort at all, for reasons on which I still must keep secret. Suffice to say, redemption was not Revan's choice, and I have never believed those of the Council who attempt to console themselves otherwise for the crime they committed. But we have spoken enough, I think, in words I think dull us both. Let us speak through the Force, through sparring. This form you may have already seen much of during the Mandalorian Wars, but it is fitting to speak using elements of the past, I think. Ataru is the name given to the movements of this form. Though it is aggressive, it is focused, and its best use is in combat against a single opponent. This form is somewhat less useful in deflecting blaster shots. Use it when dealing with opponents in close combat, not against a battalion firing heavy blasters at you. Perhaps exile has been good to you indeed. It has certainly not dulled your instincts, nor the speed at which you learn. I shall go to Dantooine, to the ruins of the Enclave. If you gather the others, I will meet you there. And thank you, exile. You are returning. It is good that you are back among us. Baposka Dwana Chichuba.
Babuska Dwana.
I might have a moment. What is it, Goto? I have spent some time in the presence of your remote, and the upgrades you have performed on him are quite adequate. I am impressed with your work, though less so with your remote itself. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things, to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. Yes, General? you something? Your face. You, well, you have this glow. I mean, not a real glow, but it's like you're calm. At peace? 
but but it's more than that. You haven't been chewing on spice, have you? Okay, maybe not spice. Maybe someone just jammed a power coupling up your ion engine and switched it on full. Go ahead and ask. Hanhar is only a bounty hunter because that's the closest word for what he does. He's not out for credits. He's more vicious than that. And it runs a lot deeper. It's like he's out to make the whole galaxy suffer. Every living thing in it. He wants to break them, ruin them. And when they can't suffer anymore, he wants them dead. I didn't kill him once. Biggest mistake ever. That's a long story. I don't want to get into it. Maybe some other time. Talk. About what? Why, you trying to be my mother? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. No thanks. I didn't need friends on Nar Shaddaa, and I don't need them now. Go ahead and ask. Look, before we get into a game of Guess the Pazak card, pull back on the throttle. I don't know you that well to start sharing our life stories. Talk. Sure, very easy. That's why I dress like this. When they're looking down to check you out, you can usually smash them on the base of the skull or deliver an uppercut that knocks them flat. It's simple. When you want a man, you jab him with a boffin stunner, then while he's screaming in pain, slap some stun cuffs on him. Then starve him for two or three days until he becomes open to suggestion, then double check his bounty and see if he's worth anything. Call it what you want. Me? I love my targets. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's... Ugh, everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing something, somewhere with people, activity, some life. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off planet. Guess I got used to it. Well, Nar Shaddaa may be one of the biggest cesspits in the galaxy, but it's got a life to it. Activity, aliens, people, refugees. It's like noise, but relaxing. Like the hum of a hyperdrive. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. I'll believe it when I see it. No thanks. You can keep your Jedi training to yourself. I already know Nar Shaddaa better than you ever will. Yeah, something wrong? <laughs> grenades? I didn't think Jedi used grenades. Well, I don't like to use them unless they're C5 concussion spheres or the Mersan cryoban pellets. Sonic Screamers aren't too bad either, just don't use them on a Bith. It makes their head explode like a melon. And don't do it to a Celestine either. It makes their ears bleed and they gibber twice as fast. All right, all right, keep your robes on. Here you go. Yeah, something wrong? More grenades? Well, keep hoping, because that's not my specialty. Trust me. Mass slaughter weapons just cause trouble. Well, all right. You've got a good point. But look, be careful with them. And all it takes is one blaster bolt to your bandolier strap and suddenly you're Paragus. Get it? All right, all right, keep your robes on. Here you go. Yeah, something wrong? Not right now, you've got a... Go ahead and ask. Look, before we get into it... Talk. Why, are you trying to be my mother? No thanks. Go ahead and ask. I didn't kill him once. That's a long story. Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. Oh, do I? Is that it? How you could ever possibly hope to understand is beyond me. Jedi don't have family. I know what happened at Malachor 5, and I know the Jedi didn't care about life there.
get away from me. The next time you come and ask me a question, I swear I'll shoot you in the head and dump you out the airlock. What do you want now? Whatever, don't worry about it. It's just a sore subject with me. Yeah, well, they're dead. That's how that story ends. But not everybody's story has to end with losing their family or their loved ones. And not all the bounty hunting I do is for criminals or killers. There's a lot of lost people out there, scattered ever since the Mandalorian Wars. And sometimes it's like you can almost hear them, like an echo calling out for each other. And maybe, just maybe by finding them, I can start putting the galaxy back together. Maybe. We'll see. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. But you're not getting anything else out of me. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. I wasn't born there. I just ended up there. Well, the war happened. The first one against the Mandalorians. I had family right up until the end. It's not really a new story. You hear it all over the galaxy. It's what happens after the wars are over that you don't hear much about. I think so. After Revan crushed the Mandalorians, planets throughout the Republic were flooded with refugees. I was just one of the others. Me? I got passage to Nar Shadda. From there, not much you can do, so I became a bounty hunter. Take a guess, Jedi. Only two groups of people would have lost family at Malachor. And Jedi don't have families. As much as any slave becomes a Mandalorian, they took prisoners on every world they conquered to bolster their ranks. And they took a lot of worlds. When I was young, yeah. They mostly used me to carry ammo packs and munitions. Toward the end of the war, they needed everyone they could get. They taught me to fight, to hunt, to survive. I was part of their squad, even when I was young. Everyone served as part of the unit, and I, I felt like I had a place there. After Malachor, it really didn't matter anymore. Mandalorians lost. Bad. But you know that. Yeah, I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you. I haven't forgotten it. What happened at Malachor, they, they probably deserved it. Should I be? Maybe I should be happy about all the Jedi who died on Malachor V. Maybe it felt like you lost family there, but I doubt it. Yeah, I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you, I haven't forgotten it. What happened at Malachor, they... they probably deserved it. Go ahead and ask. I didn't kill him once. I guess to mis do you really want to hear this? Well, Hanhar and me go way back, in the worst possible way. He's from some forest planet on the Outer Rim where Zerka had set up one of their slaving operations. I don't remember the name. It's something with too many K's and Y's. It sounds like you're gargling Ronto spit when you say it. No idea. He's just... Hanhar. I hope there aren't any more like him. I get the impression he's not a good representative of his people, though. He's the equivalent of a mad calf hound among Rontos. Some of Voga the Het's men said Hanhar killed his own tribe, but those two crud thugs lie every time they open their mouths, so who knows? Well, not for long. Once off planet, Hanhar escaped from the Zerka slavers, then killed them all. I don't know. I always thought he just liked using them as weapons. Well, before you get too proud of him, Hanhar figured Zerka had the right idea. I don't think he understood the concept of slavery before, at least on the scale that Zerka practiced it. But now he did. You ever hear of Dursan III or the ID Cluster Colonies? Right, that's because Hanhar happened. He makes what happened to his homeworld look like an exercise in community building. He's not a bounty hunter. He's a slaver. A predator. It's like he's out to enslave or kill every human in the galaxy, like he's trying to settle some huge score or debt. I don't get it, but he's dangerous. 
anyone who paid credits. And sometimes, he just hunted human sport. The ones who survived, he sold to the exchange, to the huts, to anyone who'd buy bodies, living or dead. He and Voga used to do big credit transactions. That hut really liked the look of unwrinkled humans for some. Didn't make him too popular with the other huts, let me tell you. I was prey. And not only did I escape, but I saved his life while doing it. He's been hunting me ever since. I don't pretend to understand it, but among his people, they have these codes of honor. But somewhere along the line, Hanhar's got twisted. His people form these things called life debts. If you save the life of one of them, they pledge themselves to you. Well, with Hanhar, he can't escape that life debt. It's bred into him. But he hates every other living thing in the galaxy, so pledging himself to someone else, especially a human, was unbearable. So when I saved his life, it was the worst thing I could do. It was like slavery all over again. But it was in his head. It was like it pushed him over the edge. A life debt to Hanhar is a death sentence. He'll hunt you until you're dead. When I saved his life, it meant he had to kill me. And so he kept hopes I would die. I think the fact I showed him mercy after hating humans for so long, that was something he couldn't stand. Tell me about it. Like I said, I get the impression a life debt's supposed to be a gift. But to Hanhar, it's more like a curse to both people involved. Probably. But if he had multiple life debts, especially to humans, Hanhar would probably go mad. He was angry before, sure, but he'd be ten times worse if that happened. Hanhar's tough. Really tough. And when he loses it, it's like nothing can stop him. I've seen him shrug off blaster bolts, both and stunners, and even survive a freighter crash on Dursan 3. He keeps coming. Oh, I'm glad he's gone. It's like a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to keep watching my back every minute, wondering when he's going to show up. And he always did. It's like he always knew where I was. Trust me, if he was still alive, He'd be chasing us even now, waiting to ambush us when we least expect it. And he always shows up at the worst possible time. He was one of the best bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa. Hanhar never gives up on his prey. Or his life debts. He's a hunter. He's a natural predator. Well, as happens on Nar Shaddaa, I made someone mad. Mad enough for them to send Hanhar after me. Turns out they were even able to get him cheap. He heard about me and wanted to hunt me down. For sport. He didn't think I'd be much of a challenge. <laughs> well, he tried to box me down in vents beneath the Narshadot docks, and he'd, he'd set one too many proximity mines to cover the escape routes. I think he'd hoped to drive me into the mines and then let them do the work. Or that I'd be too scared to try and walk through them. Thing is, I knew Hanhar's supplier and the trigger signatures for the mines. It was pretty easy to broadcast a signal to blind their sensor receptors for a minute or two. I figured that would buy me enough time to move through them and get away. No, it isn't. I spent most of my childhood hauling mines and munitions. Got to know my way around them. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I said, I disarmed the trigger fuses for enough of the mines to get by, temporarily. And Hanhar was pretty fast on my trail. I just made it to safety when he hit the first one. The blast leveled the entire ventilation section, and Hanhar was caught right in the middle, and he survived. Barely. He was crawling around, blinded from the flash and the plasma burns. And it happened so fast. And all the blood had been scabbed and crusted from the flash. I had the drop on him, and even blind, he knew it. He could still hear me. My ears were ringing from the blast, but I, I could hear him. I think he was begging me to let him live. His voice, it wasn't a roar, more like an echo of it. I suppose I should have killed him, but I couldn't do it. He was in pain, and he was helpless. So I dragged him out of there enough to get him to safety. And he kept hunting me ever since. He said he'd pursue me to the edge of the galaxy. No matter where I ran, he would find me and break me. That I would always be prey. Maybe. I've thought about that moment, a lot. Wondered if I would do things differently if I had another chance. 
go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling, being trapped in the ship. Everything's, everything's just too quiet. I'd rather be doing, yeah, it's been a while. Well, Narsha, it's got a life to it. I... Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. I'll believe it when I see it. Maybe one day, I'll let you. All right, but I doubt you're gonna show me anything I don't already know. And when you show me, don't act like a tourist. It attracts predators. Go ahead and ask. Talk. About what? Why, are you trying to be my mother? No thanks. I... Something up? All right. No, I don't think... All right. Yes, is there something you have come to offer me? What have you brought me? The fact we are even having a conversation is gratitude. Usually, my conversations do not have the give and take that our current interaction does. And, of course, there is much more screaming on the part of the listener when the torture field is activated. I am willing to indulge some of your questions. There are several factors, all of which affect each other. There is the stabilization of Dantooine, the preservation of the restoration efforts on Telos, the political resolution on Onderon, and the unification in the galaxy, either Jedi or Sith. The destruction of my yacht and of all my activities on Nar Shaddaa carry a cost that would take you several lifetimes to pay back. But perhaps the offer of credits will spur you to act quicker, more decisively. I am not unsympathetic to such greed. For every system you stabilize, I will reward you for your efforts. Compassion and mercy only erode respect and power. There is the stabilization of Dantooine. Dantooine is a vital resupply point for the Republic. If its stability is compromised, then the Republic will lose control over many outlying worlds, and they will become a haven for raiders and smugglers. The economic loss from such outer worlds is greater than the Republic is aware of. If the matter is not corrected, then it shall fall. Onderon is an outer rim world, rich in ecological resources. Its aggressive ecology is capable of bringing devastated worlds back to life. It is currently experiencing a political schism split between two forces. One must triumph for the planet to be stabilized. Telos is instrumental to the stability of the Republic. Its success or failure will dictate the economic forecasts of many other worlds. Of course, since the destruction of the Paragas facility, the odds of the Telos restoration project being successfully completed is close to zero. Then stop causing events of planetary destruction. You are a walking catastrophe and you are not making saving the Republic any easier. Of course it was. If you had not gone there, the facility would not have been destroyed. If you had simply surrendered to the Sith, then all of that violence would have been unnecessary. I hope you do not decide that the next thing that must be destroyed to stop the Sith is the galaxy itself. Perhaps one must ask themselves at what point defending your religious ideals is advantageous to the Republic as a whole. As long as your defense does not exterminate more than 50% of those you intend to help, is that acceptable? You may speak. It has been 
assigned to guard and protect you. As such, it is well suited for a variety of tasks. It is skilled in intimidation, interrogation, and can provide a series of select skills that will make it an effective killing machine. For the most part, it will follow your orders unless they conflict with mine. Then its proton core will detonate, turning this ship into spist. There is no negotiation in this. I will not allow you to interfere with my operations and plans. This unit comes with a droid scrambler that you may use against mechanized opponents to randomize their defensive and offensive protocols. Use it and it will cause droids to wage a civil war in their programming and they will turn on their allies. Its power source is not limitless, but it is enough. In addition, this unit comes equipped with a portable cloaking generator. It will allow it to enter places under reconnaissance mode. Jedi specimen you are. I am willing to indulge some of your questions. Now, now, that would be telling. For now, my presence must remain a secret, and it may remain that way forever. You may speak. The assassin droids. I have encountered some, purchased the service of others. Why, I asked them to. To be honest, I believe that was always their intention, but it seems their directive was dormant for some time. If you mean produced, no, I do not. I do know that there are a surprising number scattered throughout the Republic fleet searching for you. What they will do now that you are found is easy to predict. Of course they are. They're droids with very specific protocols that unless changed will dictate their movements. Unless you shut them down at the source, they will be stalking you until you are captured or terminated. Now, is there something else you wish to know or do you wish to wait time? They are masquerading as protocol droids. I have discovered that when they are used in negotiations, they have a predictable pattern of sabotaging whatever peace treaties they are involved with. Because the Republic has no reason to investigate otherwise, and any discovery of their true purpose has been concealed by well-timed accidents. Because their behavior is predictable, of course. By monitoring their presence, I know which worlds will suffer civil wars, planetary conflicts, and Republic bombardment. Of course they are. They're droids with very specific protocols that unless changed will... T unless you shut... Now, is there something... I am willing to indulge some of your questions. A common misconception not supported by facts. Revan did not intend to destroy the Republic. He deliberately left the infrastructure of many planets intact and many military production facilities. I believe that by whatever means he used to build his armada, he recognized that it was somehow a limited source or that he was only willing to use it to a point. My prediction is that whatever production facility was being employed, it carried a price that Revan perceived as detrimental to the goals of the Sith. And that is why Revan left many military production facilities in the Republic intact. That is what occupies my calculations as well. I believe that Revan saw a war on another front that we foresaw the value in keeping a strong military force. That is also a mystery to me. I do not have any evidence upon which to build an answer. It is significant that after the defeat of Malak, the forces decreased considerably, and after Revan's departure from known space, production ceased completely. It is my prediction that whatever was producing such forces needed a strong, effective leader to ensure its stability. Without Revan or Malak, there was no such figure left among the Sith. Unlike Revan, Malak demonstrated no concern for the future of the Republic in his attacks. His stratagems were painfully obvious, intending to crush
crush all resistance everywhere. There was little thought beyond the complete destruction of anything that opposed him. He left quite a mess. I'm still trying to assess all the damage. Between the two, I would have preferred Revan rule the galaxy, and foresight in his conquest, a subtlety that Malak did not possess. You may speak. here you felt it did you not the time to hide your presence is coming to a close and you will need to increase your training you are ready your training must increase and there are higher mysteries you must learn but only you must know the path you will take I cannot choose it for you is it battle that stirs you to meet an enemy blade upon blade such is the way of the greatest of Jedi warriors, the Weapon Masters. Or perhaps it is investigating the mysteries of the galaxy, seeking out injustice and harm, and bringing it into the light. Such is the way of the Jedi Watchmen in the time of Ulik Keldroma and Exar Kun. Or perhaps your way lies upon the ancient mysteries, and to teach others the ways of the Force, as I have, the way of the Jedi Master. It is not some great test you require to be what you strive to be. It is only your decision to find that path that matters. From here on, you guide your destiny. But in order to take the next steps, you must face your past and put it to rest. Yes. Have you come with questions? Well, what is it that drives you? She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Listen deeper to her breathing, and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death, and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that Masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. Yes? Have you come with questions? Very well. What is it that drives you? When I spoke of sight before, 
There is a similar handicap that tends to occur among those strong in the Force. They neglect their skills. Some believe they no longer need them. The greatest wielders of the Force are those that maintain some grounding to the more physical realities of the universe. Some wielders of the Force have mastered piloting, others the ability to fix and repair and build from simple moisture vaporators to more complex machines such as droids and vehicles. One's ability to understand the human body and its ailments, for example, can make your powers within the Force more complete, more powerful, when you attempt to repair the cellular damage of another. And others have mastered the more subtle work of politics, persuasion. Do not doubt that a galaxy may be conquered with words, a republic overthrown, and an empire made. When such skills are honed, one's abilities with the Force become that much stronger. My warning to you is this. Do not rely on your companions to compensate for your weaknesses in skill. There will be times they will not be there to help you when needed. What skill would you say is your greatest strength? And what skill would you say is your greatest weakness? Then my task before you is this. Take your greatest weakness, devote effort to it, strengthen it, and I will show you how it shall strengthen your power in the Force. As you learn and train and test yourself against the galaxy, all your skills have a chance to improve and grow as well. When you devote some of that training to your weakest skill, you will know. Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. What is it that drives you? Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the Room of a Thousand Fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth, as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal, and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors, with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death. And... This place is so quiet. Nothing like Nar Shaddaa. I don't even know why I'm here. Hm. Wonder how much the bounty on the Jedi is now. Don't understand how that Jedi keeps in shape like she does. She's barely changed from the holo records. She just seems to be naturally beautiful. Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General. And I obey, as I did at Malakor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, switch the face of the plus one I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine ten. Or in fear. Switch the face of the plus two. The command is still general. The total and, is eight. And I obey. Switch as I did at Malakor. Not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droids cannot be read in such a way. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. His thoughts are black. Indeed. It is strange that I did not. Perhaps I would not put much weight on such things. 
Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Yes, have you come with questions? Very well. What is it that drives you? Ah, oh, I had wondered if... But your powers are strong indeed. Now is not the time to speak of this. Wait until you have more of the galaxy within you and we shall speak again. Every step on our journey shall bring with it discoveries. With persistence, you shall grow in the Force. And for every planet we reach, all that we touch with our presence, you shall grow, for you will have no choice. Something up? Passes the time. It's better than listing off engine sequencers, memorizing hyperspace routes, or counting ticks in the power couplings. Of course it's fixed. And that's why you should count the ticking in the power coupling, too. Why do I play Pazak? All right, I'll show you. Good match. Now, what are you thinking about right now? Right. And that's why I play Pazak in my head. Because if you don't, you've left the door open, and anyone could walk right in. Of course you did. You see, Jedi, light or dark, do it. More often than you'd think. But I never heard one say they were sorry before. That's a new house rule. Now I play Pazak in my head. But while I'm doing that, it's a harder one to walk in. No, I can only teach you to play Pazak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Now you understand. All right, I'll deal then. If you're ever fighting someone who has the power over your mind, whether light or dark, play Pazak. Start listing hyperspace routes, recite engine sequencers, and when they try to use their powers on you, suddenly it's not as easy as they thought. Because you'll be right here with me, playing Pazak, where they can't reach you. Something up? All right, what did you want to know? Well, there was a woman, a Jedi. She, she gave her life for mine. I never knew her name. She sought me out. She said she had come to save me. She was lying, of course, or I think she was. It doesn't matter. She told enough truth to get my attention. She said that Revan was doing something terrible to Jedi within the Unknown Regions. That when we captured Jedi, they were sent to a place designed to... break them. And that anyone in his service who showed any ability with the Force was sent there too. To turn them. To break them into Dark Jedi. Or assassins trained to kill Jedi. She said that's what would happen to me. That I had the Force inside me. That's why I was so good at killing Jedi. And that when the Sith learned of it, there would be no escape. No turning back. I would become an instrument of the dark side, forever. I had heard talk in the ranks, troops vanishing. I knew what she meant, but I didn't believe her, or want to believe her. I did what I did with all Jedi. I hurt her. I hurt her a lot. And then, right when I thought she couldn't take any more, 
She showed me the Force, in my head, and I felt everything she felt. And I heard just an echo of what the Force was, and how what I was doing, I think I loved her. But it wasn't that kind of love. It was the kind of love where you're willing to give up everything for someone you don't even know. I killed her for crawling in my head, for showing me that. But before she opened her mind to mine, my only thought was that I would love to kill her. And at the end, I killed her because I loved her. In the end, she sacrificed herself to keep my secret. To prevent the Sith from knowing about that touch of the Force inside me. She wasted her life to save me. Me. And I felt her die when she opened her mind. I've killed Jedi, like I said, but I was never there to feel it, to be on the receiving end. And after that, I couldn't stop feeling things. Before, guilt, lust, impatience. It had been orchestrated to get close. Now it all just kept tumbling out, and I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. So I left. I fled with the displaced war veterans to Nar Shaddaa, and I lost myself there. Until the war came to an end. I wanted no more of Jedi, or Dark Jedi, or the Force. I just wanted to be left alone. And then, I met you on Paragus. And I thought maybe, maybe she had saved me so that I could help you. And if I can't, then I have to try. I didn't want to tell you any of this, but I had to. Because if something happens, I can't let you think I was doing it for something other than the past. Once, a Jedi showed me the Force. I heard it. I felt it. At the time, there was too much pain to confront it. Because if I did, it meant I would be changed into something else. Now, I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I think that by learning how to use it, I can help protect you. Or at least buy you some time when disaster comes screaming in. I want to learn how to use the Force. I want to learn how to use the Force to help you. What must I do? Is there some... some ritual? Or... Yes, General. My life for yours. I will answer what I can. Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. What is it that drives you? Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? It allows you to recover your strength with the Force more quickly, and it lends strength to your Force powers. It has no other drawbacks. Such a form is a gift, preferred of the Jedi Consulars, and effective in combats where you must fight only through the Force. Very well. Very well. 
The Jedi practice many forms, many styles of lightsaber combat. It is good to know them, but not to rely on them. You may have already felt the Shicho. The simplest of the forms return to you, as others may come with time. Ah, one of the techniques you've learned from the Masters. This technique is good against a lone opponent, and you will find your critical strikes are more effective, but you will be vulnerable to almost everyone else you are fighting. Others may come with time, with experience. It is simple, and its simplicity is strength. It allows focus, a slightly improved chance of connecting with one's opponent. It has no other advantages or disadvantages. It is an effective form to fall back on when no other form will do. Others may come with time. Ah, a technique that helps one resist the force attacks of an enemy and also is excellent in lightsaber combat. It does more damage, but it leaves you vulnerable to other attacks. Use it against others wielding the force or lightsabers, but not against anyone else. Others may come with time, with experience. A defensive technique, but effective. Use it if you do not wish to be hit or if you are facing many opponents with blasters. With a lightsaber blade and enough skill in deflection, it is an excellent offense against blasters, but in other situations, it merely delays the inevitable. Others may come with time, with experience. Yes, have you come with questions? Ask and I will answer. I know her as ask and he, if he can truly, he spared them, keep his slave. What's wrong? Why are you stopping? I've been by here hundreds of times. There's nothing special about it. No, I don't believe in the Force. It's Jedi tricks. Sleight of hand. All right. It's not gonna hurt, is it? Feel the currents here on Narshada, the ebb of life. A simple kindness can be given to another. This is the Force, and all our choices, from the greatest to the smallest, affect each other, and the echoes travel. I can feel this planet. I can't shut it out. It's louder now, it hurts. All these people. That's what I want. I'm sure of it more than anything. I want to become like you. I want to be strong. I don't want to be afraid or alone anymore. 
But I, I don't want to keep running and looking and never feel like I'm finding what I'm looking for. I am tired of being hunted. When the galaxy takes something from me, I want the power to let go. And I want the power to heal the echo when it's gone. That sounds all right from where I'm standing. I hear you. Why are you here? Because I told her. Told her everything. Ah, and now you are free? Yeah, so no more threats, no more of your requests. You and me, we're done. Did you ever think I truly held you? You're more of a fool than I thought. What truly held you was you. And let me show you why. I once held the galaxy by the throat, as you once held her by the throat and let her die slowly and your emotion at that point is what you fear I can unlock that part of you anytime I wish it is a simple thing the human mind once it feels something strongly it becomes etched in the memory the subconscious shall I show you that part of you that hungered to kill Jedi that took pleasure from or perhaps you will continue to listen to my counsel, and I shall ignore your pathetic attempts at freedom. Now leave me, murderer. I have nothing further to say to one such as you.